Okay, so welcome to uh, this workshop on uh, software defined radio. I'm Didier Stevens working for uh, Enviso. So we are really going just to look at the basics of uh, software defined radio. We are not going to break anything or hack anything, just try to get a, a simple radio working. And uh, we are going to work with GNU radio. So when it's a hands-on workshop, uh, you will learn a few things just by trying to uh, do it. So we will use GNU Radio, that's open source uh, software for software-defined radio. But uh, GNU Radio is not that easy to use, it has a steep learning curve. And uh, therefore we are going to use GNU Radio Companion. And GNU Radio Companion is a, a kind of IDE, Integrated Development Environment, so it gives you a GUI to uh, build software-defined radios. And the way we are going to use that is with the live SDR environment. That's the USB stick that you got. So that is a live USB environment, an ISO, from which you can boot. The one you got here is just one that I downloaded. The, the, it's not the latest one, but it's uh, the GNU Radio Live SDR environment. That ISO file that you download, and you can get it from GNU Radio. The only special thing about that USB stick is that it contains one sample, one example. Okay, one radio, a simple radio. That's what we are going to start with. So the dongle you got here is this one here, USB Digital TV Receiver RTL2832U. So that is one of those USB dongles that you can use just to watch digital TV on your laptop. It comes with software so that you can watch uh, TV, digital TV on your laptop. Now the thing about this one here is that it has an integrated circuit inside which implements a software-defined radio and this one here can be used with GNU Radio and GNU Radio Companion. Okay, so we are not going to use the stock software that was delivered with that to watch TV. And that's not what we are going to do. We are going to use GNU Radio and GNU Radio Companion. So that's a site where you can find everything. And then also, I'm going to point you to that site here, Great Scott Gadgets. If you go to the SDR, Great Scott uh, Gadgets. So that is uh, from the guy who builds those dedicated software uh, defined radios like the Hack RF1. And on this page here, SDR you will find a lot of his resources for introductions to software-defined radios, like videos that he made, YouTube videos, about uh, using his tools and uh, software-defined radio. Okay, so we can start now. So you can boot from the USB stick, and once you have booted in Ubuntu, you can plug in the TV USB dongle, and then, in the root folder of the file system, you will find this file, one simple FM radio, .grc, okay? And you can open that file, okay? And then, just a remark, at the end of the workshop, I would like to get my sticks back, okay? I bought them with my own money. Uh, a couple of years ago, I, I bought one on Deal Extreme, uh, one of those Chinese uh, websites where you can buy cheap stuff. I bought one, I tested it out, saw that it worked, and then uh, I bought 20 of them so that I can uh, give those workshops here. Okay. okay, I have one more USB stick. So let me boot. But 
this one. No, no, you can get it, but you see this one is broken. So it will work, but you will not be able to receive anything. <laughs> Just try a stick from somebody else. So when somebody has booted in a uh, GNU Radio Companion, should work without a stick and then try another one. I don't install anything, I just use the live uh, boot option. So that's how it looks here. Let me share my screen. And if you can, you go. Oh no, no, indeed. You you could try another stick because I use it on a Mac too. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen. So this is also the screen you would get if you would boot from that ISO, from that uh, live CD, if you just downloaded it from the GNU radio site. So this is Ubuntu, and you have the GNU radio companion installed here. Now, if, like me, you don't have um, a UK or US keyboard, and you're not familiar with Ubuntu, you can change the keyboard here. See here, uh, I have E and English. I can click on that to change my keyboard layout. Here in text entry settings. And then here you can add your keyboard. Okay, so I'm going to add a Belgian keyboard. And I'm going to remove the U key keyboard. Okay. So in case you don't have a US or UK keyboard, I don't actually a UK keyboard is it? I know it's not completely the same as US keyboard, but can you work with it? When yeah. But we don't. We won't have to type a lot, you know. Just a, a bit of numbers. And then it's easy when you have the right keyboard. So we can close this. I can plug in the TV dongle. Uh, the blue LED should light up. And then 
here you go to your file system and in the root here you can find that file so that's a simple example that I made one simple FM radio okay so you can open that okay so this is the GNU radio companion I'm seeing here And you can see different components that I put in here. We'll talk about them later. We are just starting already with that just to check out that everything works fine with you, uh, with your system, okay? Once we know that, then we will go into building our own simple radio step by step. So I did this in my room and I got a fine reception. Unfortunately, in this room, not. I don't. I think there's too much interference from uh, all uh, the transmitters and all the computers. But maybe we'll still find something. So I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to run this, and you can do this here with this play button at the top. Okay. And then you get static. If you get static, then it works. Okay. I had good reception of a local radio here 89.1 but here in this room not um, if you want to try it out so here on the Osmo consource yeah this block dub double click this block and here you can see a frequency right, in Hertz 1,600,000, uh, that's uh, exponential notation. So that 100.6 megahertz. Okay, a million of hertz, megahertz. That's uh, a local station in Brussels, works well in Brussels, but not here, of course. And what I had good success here was 89.1 here. But again, in this room, when I just tried it, it was not so fine. Maybe for your machine, it will be a bit different can try it out see but I still get static even when I try to be an antenna myself no. 100.9 okay No, no. Yeah, and if you want to stop it, here you have the stop uh, button after next to the play button. Okay. Are you having a problem? Oh yeah, okay. I got your weapon running. Okay. Fine. USB sticks, yeah. Okay, so this diagram here, going to explain that later, but so this is how you build your uh, definitions of software defined radio and the way you play it with it. So when you play that uh, software defined radio, it's with the button here play. Now, if we go into a shell, and I do a less of that file to look at the input, you can see it's actually XML. Okay, so that GRC file, 
the definition file for new radio companion X is an XML file. And if we go through it, Okay, you see, you see, for example, this is the mega earth that we entered. So it's an XML file, a TRC file. Now, GNU Radio Companion, uh, sorry, GNU Radio, GNU Radio is a set of libraries that helps you build software defined radios eh, by programming, by building programs. And uh, Typical way of doing this is to program this in Python or in C, C++. Okay? But you can avoid having to program in those languages by using the GNU Radio Companion. Now, if you look here at the output of the GNU Radio Companion, here, if you scroll up a bit, you can see generating temp topblock.py and executing temp topblock. By. So it's actually GNU Radio Companion is actually by using this diagram here building a Python file for you, generating a Python script and then executing that. So we can have a look at that one. So in the temp folder here I have top block.py And this is the Python program that was generated for you. So before GNU Radio Companion, uh, users of GNU Radio had to write them by, uh, write this by hand uh, themselves. Could not use a generator. And here, uh, for example, you can see the frequency that I set. You can execute this program too from Python. You don't have to run it inside the GNU Radio Companion environment. You can just run it from Python like this. Sorry, it's. You want the tab bigger or the font bigger? Font, yeah. Okay. Is that in settings? It's in the actual terminal? Yeah. Okay. Ah, yeah. yeah. View. Would zoom in work? Yeah. Is that good for you? Want it bigger? Oh. Okay. So I have the Python program here that was generated by the GNU Radio Companion. You can look at the code and you can execute it like this. Just run Python. You see. And then you get the same effect. You can stop it with Ctrl C. Okay. So now before we start building our ra own radio here with those blocks, we are just going to build the same radio and then improve upon it. Before we do that, I already want to show you some things you need to know about new radio. For example, about those arrows here that create connections between the blocks. So you can select an arrow like this. Yeah, I double clicked it so it disappeared. This one here too. Click. Disappeared. 
Otherwise, here you will have a button here, delete the selected block, you can use that too, to delete the connection. And then to create a connection again, you first click on the output here out, and then on the input here, and then it draws the arrow. Okay? You can remove the arrow again. Yeah, here. So I was able to select it once, and here you see I can delete it. Move this one out of the way, and then connect these ones here. Okay. You can see that this time the arrow is red. Okay. It means that there is a problem. I will explain that later. The colors are different, so you cannot just connect them directly. Okay. Here you see it was blue-blue, so that could be enabled. And here orange-orange, that could also be connected. And when you have errors in your file, then you are not able to run it, and you get a warning here. You can click on that warning to get more explanation. But that's the kind of explanation you get from GNU Radio, so uh, kind of cryptic, not explanations from GNU Radio Companion. Okay. Also, if you noticed, blocks that have problems, errors also are in red, like this one here. This one is red because it's not connected to anything. You can if I build up my diagram again, so I remove this, you will see here I will remove this connection and those two will become red. Like this, you see, because they are not connected. I make those, those two are red, I make a first connection. Okay, this one now is black. This one is still red because it still has a connector that is not connected. I can still not execute it. And if I connect them like this, then it's connected, nothing is red, and now I can run it. Okay. So that's the most important thing you need to know about connecting these things. Okay. So that's why we started here with this diagram. And now we are just going to make our radio from scratch. And I'm going to explain step by step how this works. So you create a new file here, a new flow graph with this icon. Like this. And when you do that, only two blocks are generated for you. Okay? One with the options and one with the variable. Okay. We are going to change the options, so you can double-click options. You see here the ID is top block. That's why the Python program was uh, named top block, because it's the ID of the options. What I'm going to change here, and you do that best too, in generate options, we are going to use another GUI. The WX GUI. Okay. And then you can accept this. So that is our first change. Now we can leave this block alone. This is fine. This block here defines a variable, the sample rate. So, we are dealing here with digital radio, so that means that, of course, it's not analog radio. Analog radio works with analog signals, and uh, they are not discrete, uh, those are not discrete values, those are continuous values, uh, that change continuously. When you are dealing with something uh, digital, you are dealing with something discrete different numbers and they change usually uh, from one uh, set to the other. So one byte, another byte, another byte and so on. And that's how your stream of data 
in a digital world is built. Now to convert this, to get from that analog world to the digital world, we need we need a converter. So and and a digital uh, sorry an analog radio has quite a few uh, components like. Um, for this FM radio here, yeah, and the reason why I'm uh, using an FM radio here, it's uh, about the most simple uh, device that you can build. An AM radio, eh, amplitude modulation radio, would be even simpler uh, to make, but the thing is don't, those devices don't support it, and also uh, you would almost find no more uh, stations that broadcast in, uh, in AM. Now it is FM, and FM is also uh, quickly reaching its end. In uh, I think in a year or two, for example, in Belgium, they will also st uh, stop FM broadcasts and only have the digital broadcasts. So we are dealing with something analog that we are going to process digitally. So an FM radio has several components. So first of all, an antenna to receive the radio uh, frequency, the radio signal. And that signal then needs to be decoded into something you can hear, into an audio signal. And there are several components there. For example, there is a component that will amplify the radio uh, signal that is received. There's a component that will allow you to tune into the frequencies you want to listen to. There's then a component that will demodulate the signal, uh, FM demodulation. Then a component that will amplify the audio and a uh, component that will play the audio. So all uh, those components make up uh, an analog radio, analog FM radio. In a software-defined radio, a lot of those components are going to be defined in software. Okay? So for example, the FM demodulator it will not be built in hardware, and you will do it with software. And that's what we are going to do here. So simply put, the device of a software device uh, defined radio hmm, that gives you the data stream that you can process, uh, simply put, it has just an antenna, a tuning circuit, but much broader than what you would have in an analog radio, and then something that converts those that analog data to digital data. Okay? And that's an AD converter, analog to digital converter. And an analog to digital converter takes a continuous signal and produces a discrete signal. And you have to define the speed at which it has to do that. Uh, for example, every second. Take a sample every second. Yeah? Now that would be good for a very uh, slow moving signal, but nothing like audio or radio or anything. Audio, for example, uh, what we speak, if I'm not mistaken, it's between 100 Hz and about 15,000 Hz, if I'm not mistaken. But no, sorry, speaking, no, between 300, 300 and 3,000, sorry. Uh, I was talking about music and things like that, what we hear. Okay, but so what we speak is about 300, 3000. And so that's in Hertz. That means that you have three, if we are talking about 300, the lowest frequencies, about 300 changes per second. Okay? So if you would sample only once per second, yeah, that would not work because you have too much changes in your time between your waiting for your next sample. Okay? So you have to. Um, sample at a speed that is high enough for what you're going to capture. And that is the, here the purpose of this variable. The SAMP rate, you can double click this and you can see that it is set to 32,000. That's uh, the default. But that is way too low for uh, digital for uh, analog radio for the FM radios we are going to capture our device that we have here can go about to 2 MHz 
as a sample rate. Okay? So we will use that, but we will not use exactly 2 MHz, not 2 million, but we will use something closer by, and I will explain you later why we do that, and that's 1,920,000. Like this. That's a sample rate that we are going to use there. So that is the sample rate that we'll use that we will use to produce digital data from our software defined radio. Okay. So that set can work with that. And now we are going to add our radio. And here, in the right hand, is there a problem? Yep. Oh, it's making a lot of noise. Yeah. Here you can go in the right hand into sources. And here you have the Osmocom source. So that defines a software defined radio device, and you can drag this into your diagram. So it's put in your diagram, it's red because there's an error, and it's not connected. And you can see already a couple of values, like 100 MHz, that's the frequency, uh, the default frequency it will operate on. And then you can see your sample rate, and sample rate is 1.92 MHz. So the, the value that we gave it here, this variable. And the reason why that is, if you double click on it, You can see here the sample rate is not a number, but it's a variable, the variable that we defined here. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Could you repeat the name of the source? Ah, yes, of course. Osmocom source here. Osmocom. This is the first one in sources. Okay. There are many more parameters, but we don't need to touch them. So, and what you are actually doing now is writing a kind of program. And uh, when you run this, this will generate a Python program like we saw. So that is our source. So that will enable us to select the radio signal in the FM band, for example. And then we will get that raw FM band. And with this parameter frequency here, we can tune what we want, but you will not get only this, and eh? depending on uh, the bandwidth of, of your device, you can get several megahertz to the left and to the right. This here, again, it's not a very powerful device, of course, so we won't get much, but it's still good enough for FM radio. If you double click again, here with output type you can see complex float 32. Okay? So that tells us that the data we are receiving are actually complex numbers. So a complex number, maybe you remember that from your math classes. So it's composed of a uh, real part and an imaginary part. Okay, so a complex number is two numbers. 
a real part, just a real number, like 1.2, and an imaginary number. And an imaginary number that is based on the, uh, the standard imaginary number i. And i, you cannot express what number that, that is, but it has one property. If you take the square of i, you get minus 1. Okay? So it's not a normal number, it's not a real number, because you cannot find any real number that you would square and then get a negative number. Yeah? All uh, integers and real numbers that you square, you always get a positive number. But the imaginary number i, that's a special one. If you square that, then you get minus 1. Okay. And so a complex number is just one number, a real number, and one imaginary number. Okay. Why is that? Because in electronics and also in uh, transmission technology, signals like this can be mathematically described with complex numbers. Okay. So you have a lot of formulas to operate on uh, signals and they work with complex numbers. And that is why we are here in this device also working with complex numbers. Eh? The radio frequency signal that we are receiving is a stream of data and those are complex numbers. That's the output. And that is also why we have here that blue output. The blue tells you that it is a complex number. And now you can also understand why we were not able to connect it to that the other one. Well, that other one is probably not a complex number, uh, the orange one. Yeah. Okay, so we have our radio signal uh, just out of the ether, not processed. And now we want to decode it. We um, have here to do the modulation. So with FM radio, we are talking about frequency modulation. And modulation is the following. Modulation means that you have your carrier signal. So one frequency you are transmitting, for example, 100 megahertz. And uh, if you would not do any modulation, uh, that would be, well, simply put, that would be the pure frequency that would be put out. And precisely 100 megahertz uh, and nothing else, except for harmonics, but let's not talk about that. So that's what you would get, just one thing. Now, to encode data on that carrier, uh, to encode signal, like audio, like music, uh, to encode audio on that, there are several techniques that have been devised. The very first one uh, that was devised was the Morse code. That was actually the most simple one, uh, method of encoding. Uh, if you want to encode something, well, you transmit and then you stop transmitting. And then you start again. And the durations of those transmissions tell you information, so the dot and the dashes. That was one of the simplest way to encode the signal, just stop transmitting the carrier wave for a short period of time and then transmit dots, dashes, like SOS for example. Another one that came a bit later is amplitude modulation. And modulation means that you are going to modify the property of your carrier wave according to another property, for example an audio signal. So you are going to use an audio signal to change your carrier wave. And what we are going to change here of uh, the carrier wave is its amplitude. Okay. So the amplitude of the wave, if you have a carrier wave, it has a standard, uh, a default, I mean a non-changing amplitude. And if you modulate that, it means that you will make the amplitude change, make it smaller or larger, depending on an audio signal, for example. Okay. So if your audio signal is strong, then you will use a large amplitude. If you have a low uh, audio signal, a low amplitude. Okay. And that's how you can 
easily encode audio signal into a carrier wave with AM. FM, frequency modulation, it's another method, but there instead of the amplitude, it's a frequency of the carrier that is modulated. Okay? So, for example, we are transmitting at 100 MHz. Well, we will make some changes to it according to the audio signal. Uh, simply put, for example, if I have an audio wave of uh, 1 kHz, then I would transmit on 100 MHz plus 1 kHz. It's not as simple as that, but that's uh, the gist of it. Okay? So, FM modulation, we encode a signal into the carrier wave by manipulating the frequency. And that's what we get here when we tune in into an FM radio. We get here radio signals that are FM modulated. So to hear the audio, we need to demodulate it. And for that, you have also blocks. In the right hand here, you have modulators. You see here at the top, amplitude modulation. And what we are going to use as an FM demodulator here is found at the bottom, WBFM receive, wideband FM demodulator. Okay. So you can take this one, WBFM receive, and drag it into your diagram. It's here. If you double click on it, you can see those two parameters. For this type of demodulator, that's the parameter that we need. I think in advanced here. So here for the quadrature rate, you can just put in your sample rate. Okay, so the variable samp underscore rate. You can also see that here, this is first in red. So because it has no... Uh, value, but if you type something, its color will change. So this WBFM receiver uh, works with a quadrature rate and an audio decimation to do the demodulation. Those are two parameters that you have to provide. And for the quadrature rate, you can provide the sample rate. And then the audio decimation that will be a number, an integer, that will be used to divide that sample rate. Okay? And we are going to use 40. And I will explain you why. So, this will do the demodulation, and the output of that will also be at a specific sample rate. Okay? But audio goes about to 20 kilohertz. Yeah? What, and most people cannot hear that, 20 kilohertz. I think about 11 or 12 years ago when I started my blog, I did a small experiment. I could, use, I could hear 17,000 kilohertz, if I'm not mistaken. Now, at, uh, 10 years later, I'm sure I'm no longer able to hear that, maybe. If I'm lucky, 15,000. And if you want to test that, that's something you can test. Eh? Um, 
you can find here also audio generators, for example, signal generators that will generate you sine waves and then you can uh, connect that to the audio output and, and hear that. Okay? So, we want to downsample that and we are going to downsample that to 40, so divide it by 40 uh, to get a, a lower sample rate, a sample rate that is better for audio. And now I can tell you why I selected here as a sample rate 1,920,000 because if I divide that by 40 then I end up with 48,000 okay 48 kilohertz and 48 kilohertz is a sampling rate that is often used for audio okay so we can close that block so that is important to understand that you have your sample rates and if you are going from radio frequencies to audio frequencies that you have to work with different sample rates we will experiment later a bit with those sample rates and uh, see what the well actually we can already do that now sorry let's just go back to this one here so here I have my radio I can play it and I have static, uh, this static. If I increase the sample rate, for example, 10 times more, that's not something that device can handle. You see, then it is interrupted. Uh, it's, it cannot sample at that frequency. Also, if you go too low, like this, then also get sample problems. So that is important to figure out the right sample rates. Eh? And here, okay, I can work with 2 million, but since I knew beforehand that I'm going to work with that FM demulator that does downsampling by dividing by an integer value, I just selected here the right value to end up uh, with um, 48 kilohertz. Okay, so if you want to make the calculations on another device, you can do the opposite and you want to end up with 48 kilohertz for example you know that your device can go up to uh, 10 megahertz right? then you divide um, sorry then you multiply that 48 megahertz by a number to get around 10 megahertz and that's the number you will hear then use okay so now we can connect this like this and now here we have an audio signal coming out you can listen to that audio signal with an audio sync so if you go at the top into audio you have here an audio sync so these are sources they consume your data from devices like the software defined radio device and then you also use sinks sinks they, they produce output for example an audio sync is connected to your uh, speaker so you can drag this into the diagram Orange, orange, so we can connect this one. You can see if the sample rate, uh, 1.92 megahertz, that's way too high for her audio. So you can double click this and open the pull down here. And here you can see 48 kilohertz is one of uh, the proposed ones. And you also have the 44.1 from CD quality. 
So you can select this one and then just connect and now you build your radio let me try again here with it was 100.9 eh? I'm trying to use an extender cable to get away from my computer, but it doesn't help. When you run this for the first time, it will ask you to save the file. Because we did not yet uh, save the file. We just created the file. So you can give it a name. Test. and then it will run it so that is a basic FM radio a receiver at the source the speaker, the audio sync and here the demodulator and the only thing you need to pay attention to is sample rates now, this is not very useful as a FM radio, for example, here that you have to stop this and then edit this uh, frequency value to tune into different stations. Now, you can uh, create uh, variables uh, for that. So here if you drill down, at the bottom you have variables with a couple of different types of variables and we are going to use the variable here. Okay. So you drag this into your diagram. Double click it. And then you call it frequency. and 109 E6 exponent, so exponent 6 means 1 million and now if I go to my source and nothing has changed it will not use this uh, variable you have to uh, open the source and change the frequency to that variable name. Any idea why I'm... Okay. It's stable now. It's no longer. Yeah. Thanks. So I double clicked here the source component, and here I have my frequency, and here now I can type the name of my variable frequency. Like this. So remember that I told you that. Uh, 
GNU Radio Companion here is generating Python programs. So what you are typing here are actually Python expressions. So here, just the name of a variable, but you can do different operations with it. For example, you would be able to do star 2 eh, to have the double of the frequency. That's, that's not something useful here, but um, there are cases where you can do conversions. For example, some of these fields will expect an integer and your variable will be a real number. What you can do then is say, okay, int of frequency. And just with a Python function int to convert something to an integer. And you can type Python expressions here. But here we just need the frequency. That's all. Okay. And now when you run this It is using this variable. Okay. Now, that's a bit of an improvement, but not much, because you can try to change this. See, but not much happens. If you want that, if you want to be able to change it, for example, with the dial, then you are going to use uh, extra elements for the GUI. We are going to introduce, introduce a graphical user interface. So here we were using one for the definition, but we were not using one for playing, for executing the code. You can also add graphical components when executing the code. And that's when we, uh, it becomes very powerful to use a software-defined radio. So we are going to use that and we have to look here into GUI widgets. So and remember we selected WX GUI, so drill down to WX, because those are the components that we are going to use. And what I'm going to use here is the WX GUI slider that allows me to give me a slider that I can use. So you can drag this onto the diagram. Yeah, so under GUI widgets, WX, WX GUI slider. And this one here will replace our frequency variable. So we can delete this, this variable, like this, and then you double click the glider and you say now that the variable, that the glider name, slider name here, sorry, is frequency. So that defines a frequency. And I'm going to go in with my slider from 80 megahertz to 108 megahertz. So from 80 megahertz to 180 megahertz that gives me 28 megahertz and I want to be able to tune in with uh, 100 kilohertz okay so that means if I have here I can say the number of steps that I want between those two values if I say 28 yeah, then I can go from megahertz to megahertz if I say 280 and 10 times more then I can go from kilohertz to kilohertz so that's what I'm going to use 280 because 28 is the difference here and I 
multiply with 10 to have 100 kilohertz steps instead of 1 megahertz steps. And then the default value, of course, 50, that's not a good one. Let's say that we start at 100 megahertz, like this. Okay. So, and if you did that correctly, everything should be green and you should be able to play. And now you can see here, this dialog box appeared, top block, with my slider. And I can use that to tune in. See? You can also click on the left and right arrows to move 100 kilohertz step by step. I'm not getting anything here. Oh yeah, this here, yeah. This one I had in my room too. This is a, a single carrier wave, looks unmodulated, and you see <laughs> it produces silent. Well, almost silent. Well, it's unfortunate. I had uh, several stations in my room. No. Is anyone able to get something over radio? Yeah, no. Uh, yes, I tried that here with the extension cable, but uh, it didn't work for me. In my room, it, it, it did better, even better than at the window. But uh, actually, I uh, around noon, I even tried to simulate an enclosed room like this and I went with all my gear into my belt room. <laughs> and it worked, but of course not that well. But still I could hear some, some talk, some music now, fortunately. But let's not despair. Can you emulate the radio? Yeah, I think you can. I think you can. But uh, I don't think yeah, then you will have the interesting features that uh, well, I mean, emulate, uh, you can uh, inject to wave fine. Okay. But then you, you won't get the interesting features that we could uh, get with the real radio. Because, so, I'm going to introduce a couple of other interesting elements. So if you go to instrumentation, you have again QT and WX, we will use WX. In instrumentation you can add instruments to your radio and observe what is uh, happening inside. And now you will see the, the power of uh, this uh, GNU radio environment and uh, software defined radio. For example, we will we'll use an fast Fourier transform sync so that we can see the visualization of the frequencies. Okay, so you can drag this onto your diagram. You see that it automatically took the sample rate here. That's why it's useful to work with that variable because components like these will take over that sample rate automatically. And now you can connect this like this. Okay. Now, this already is something very special. 
just the fact that you can say, okay, I have my output here that goes to my demodulator, and I'm going to take that output and put it in something else. Yeah, uh, that is trivial to do with software-defined radio, like you see here. But to do something like that with real radio is much more difficult because those signals you have to match impedances and and other characteristics of uh, those signals for input and output and you, you cannot just throw in other stuff like you would do uh, with uh, digital electronics or uh, analog electronics but at a lower frequency eh? when we are talking about radio frequency technology eh? just creating uh, a print with a layout that works fine is already an art. It is not that easy as just creating a print for an analog circuit for an Arduino. Because you have to take into account a lot of things that can go wrong. So, for example, analog radio is really uh, aligned, for example, on components like uh, inductors and capacitators and things like that. If you just put two traces, copper traces, on a printed circuit board next to each other, that works fine in a classic ele electronic environment, but when we are talking about radio frequencies, uh, those two are already creating a very small capacitor. And that very small capacitor can influence the behavior of your circuit because you are working with frequencies that are that high. Okay? Very small changes in capacity and inductance, they can have a big influence on your radio, in your circuit that you're building. Uh, that's something, big advantage, that you don't have uh, here in software-defined radio. Uh, you can just drag it in, connect it, and it will work. So we can play this. And now, if you tune, maybe you will find This is uh, the silent I was talking about. So that's yeah. I tried to remove it and add it again, but can you play it and yeah. show me what's happening? Keep getting this minus seven written code. Oh, minus seven. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to remove it and add it again. Mm -hmm. The thing is, you cannot um, remove uh, connections mm -hmm. and leave things unconnected, yeah. and it will not work. Mm, okay. uh, um, and you took it from instrument mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Can, can you? Yeah. Let's go to this radio mm -hmm. and try it here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so that's something else here. No, I've never seen that before. Yeah. Okay. No, sorry. Yeah, also? Yeah. Minus seven.
Okay. Ah, you have some, somebody has music. Yay. Well, let me mute mine. So that is something that I also had in my room at 186.4 MHz. I have a carrier wave here, okay. unmodulated. If you select that one, uh, first of all, you can see the peak here. Hmm? But also, if you play the audio, it's uh, much less noisy than uh, the surrounding, and that's because it's unmodulated. So, for when you demodulate it um, to audio, it's like there is no sound as silence. Can stop this. Another nice one to add is the waterfall sink. So maybe for the people who that didn't work, just remove that uh, FFT, the fast Fourier transform sink, and try just with the uh, waterfall sink. Oh. Uh, I'm, get, I'm just thinking about something. You did change this variable, WX GUI? Yeah? Okay, no. It's not that. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. I mean, I, I've given this workshop a couple of times and I've had that problem before, and, and you're using just my stick and uh, thing. Yeah? Yeah. So you can drop in that waterfall sink and connect that one too. Okay. So here you have that waterfall uh, slide. So that is something that evolves with time. Here you can see the number of seconds. So, so that was 16 seconds ago. And the colors that you see here is the energy of the radio signals captured at that frequency. Same frequency as is here. So if I go to that 86.4 yeah. you see this one here now this one here is drawing a green line okay and with FM radios you also get that but that line is blurry okay it's not a straight line but it's a, a blurry line and, and that's how in my room I was able to tune in into different uh, radio stations just by looking here at the diagrams. And you see it is that evolves in time and that's me moving the frequency.
Okay, I'm trying again now with the extension cable and next to the window. Oh. Yeah, now you see I'm getting a bit more. You see, I'm getting some faint lines. See, <laughs> those are uh, radio stations. But even if I'm tuned into them, oh, oh yeah, I can hear, I can hear a bit of music. <laughs> yeah. Let's try this one. Yeah, I have a signal here, I can hear a bit of it, and that's at 100.9 that you told me. You see, here is a signal. What do you have? 91? 91.3. No, that one is weaker for me. You see, you can see that on the graph eh? here it's more green than here. That's uh, the advantage of uh, that water flow graph. Okay, so those are very useful and uh, powerful tools that the GNU Radio Companion uh, provides you with. I mean, uh, spectrum analyzers like this and also oscilloscopes like this, uh, they don't run cheap if you have to buy them. Uh, if you want to work with real radio, but if you are working with digital radio, you can get those tools uh, for free. And they're also easy to implement, as we saw. I'm going to stop. And I'm going to add one more uh, waterfall sink. And this one here, I'm going to make it watch the audio output. Okay? So I connect the audio output with this one here, and you see that will not work, eh? because we have orange, blue. Yeah. So you have to double click that one, and say that you want to work with float numbers, not complex numbers. Okay. And then also, the sample rate is not good. And the sample rate of our audio is not the 1.92 MHz, but it's a 48 kilohertz. So you have to adapt the sample rate. So those are things you always have to pay attention to and with software defined radio here in GNU radio. The sample rates of the different components and also the impedance matching. So, and now that I've configured my second waterfall sync like that, I can connect the audio like this. But let me stop. I will make a small change here. In my slider I will say that the default value is 100.9. That's where I'm getting the best signal.
Yeah. No, I, okay, I'm getting a signal here, but here, this is just noise, you see. You don't see any structure in there. If there would be music or a sound or voice that you would recognize, then you would hear, see a different, because this here is uh, the time and this is the frequency, right? up to 20 kilohertz here. Yeah. When it's turning gray like that, it's processing too much. That's because of all those. Yeah, it's back. So I will stop this and throw out the FFT. Yeah, I could try that. Yeah, is it the same connector? No, I think it's. Uh, I think yeah, no, it's not the same. Yeah, good idea. Thank you. Yeah, we are getting something better now. Yeah, I have a bit of music. Thank you. Okay, so what we are seeing here, huh? the waterfall plot of the radio frequency and here the waterfall plot of the audio. Here you can see a bit of structure here, small changes. That's uh, the music that I'm faintly hearing. And you also see a line here. Any idea what this is? If you look into it, you can see it's 19 kilohertz. No? 19 kilohertz? No. This one here is the pilot wave for stereo. So if FM is broadcasting in stereo, then you have a pilot wave at exactly 19 kilohertz, but in the audio, okay? Not, not in uh, the, uh, well, actually also in the RF because it's in modulated into the RF, eh? but here in the audio, if that is present, then you know that you have FM radio. And the FM radio then starts at double that frequency, so at 38 kilohertz. That's uh, the other component of, um, of the FM radio. But it is, it is not just uh, left-right, because this stuff was devised a long time ago. <laughs> when people had uh, FM radio without stereo and when they introduced stereo a <laughs> long time ago 
introduction uh, of stereo. What you wanted, of course, uh, was backwards compatibility. <laughs> that when uh, the broadcast systems turned on stereo, that people with older radios would still be able to buy uh, a new radio. Uh, sorry, still be able to listen to the radio without having to buy a radio. Eh? I mean, it's not, you see, it was not an ID from Apple. Eh? <laughs> this was made by engineers <laughs> who had the best of people in mind. So <laughs> they wanted to build something and so actually this is not left-right, but it's a combination of left-right and then the difference. Okay, so that you can subtract and, ex and extract the two channels. And if you don't do that, well then you have just a mix of the two. Okay. Okay. So those are things that you can do with instrumentation and GUIs. Now I'm going to show you a couple of other simple operations you can do. For example, amplify this audio signal here. Okay, so analog radio, what would you need to do? Hmm? Built in an audio am amplifica uh, amplifier. Huh? something to amplify your audio. Here, we are just talking bits at data. How would you amplify that signal? It's just, the, just numbers. And you want to make them bigger. Multiply. multiply, yeah. Here you can just multiply. And that will make, make it louder. It will amplify it. And in your sliders here, Sorry, in not your sliders, I mean in your overview of uh, components here, you have MAT operators. You see? Absolute value, add, multiply, things like that. And you have several multipliers. A multiply by matrix conjugate constant. The constant, that's what we actually want. We want to multiply with a constant value. Okay, so you can try that, drag that in, and uh, make it twice as loud. I'm going to let you do that as a small exercise. So we want an amplifier here to have our output twice as loud. And you can use the multiplier with a constant for that. So I'm dragging in the operation here to multiply by a constant. You see that the connectors are blue, so that means complex, but we want to operate on real numbers, so you have to change that. So float. And then I remove this connector. And I drag this in. Okay. And now I hear nothing at all. And why is that? I'm multiplying with zero, so <laughs> I have nothing.
but if I change that into 2, then I multiply with 2. The nice thing about this is that you just can look at the output eh, to see if it improves. <laughs> Though, I know. Well, actually, this is if I point it to there. Yeah. Okay, so I need an assistant. <laughs> Want to play? Okay, well, that's great. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I can try that. No, no. Oh, you had another frequency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nice. I can see two carriers here, yeah. but they don't demodulate good. No. This one is a bit better, yeah. But I think actually for me the 100.9 is working best, yeah. Okay, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> then you can follow along. Yeah, so you just, let me stop this. So I put in the waterfall thing, yeah? I change it to float and then uh, the sample rate, exactly the same sample rate as the audio sync. 48 kilohertz. No, and co connecting of course. Of course, we work here with a constant, you can again work with a slider and you can drop in a slider and use that to uh, use as a volume control. I'm going to drop this one here because I'm going to put in another one. So this waterfall for the RF signal, I'm going to drop it and I'm going to add another one for the audio. So this one here, the changes you have to make float and sample rate, you replace it with 48,000, 48 kilohertz. And then now you connect this output here to here and then you can play it. 
like this. And this one here is amplified so you see a bit of difference. But I'm doing this to show something else. I want to introduce uh, filters. Okay. So filters are uh, also, they also uh, exist in uh, analog uh, radio of course. Filters allow you to filter out signals and uh, to say what kind of signals you want and what kind you don't want. And I'm going to introduce a, a bandpass filter. Okay? And a bandpass filter is a filter that will only let through certain frequencies and nothing else. Well, of course, uh, that's something you can do in a digital world. In an analog world, there's always something that goes through uh, at uh, very small values, but it's not uh, digital. So I'm removing the multiplier. And I'm going to filters. And here, don't pass filter, band pass filter. This one here. You can drag this one here and put it between the demodulator and the audio sync. And then you connect the waterfall sync to the demodulator and the next one, the second one, to the output of the filter. So when you drag this in, you see several colors, some things to pay attention to, of course. Blue, we cannot use blue, we want orange, so complex numbers need to become real numbers, floating numbers. Sample rate here too, 1.92 MHz. That's not what we are working with. We are working with 1.92 MHz at the RF side, but at the low frequency side and the audio side, we are working with 48 kilohertz. Always things you have to pay attention to, otherwise it doesn't work. So here you select float float eh? from a floating number to a floating number. You have two options with decimation and interpolation. We are not going to set those parameters so you can just select decimation and leave the default values. And eh? we are not going to do resampling or uh, amplification eh? with gain or things like that. No. So just float float. Decimation here, the sample rate 48,000. And now we are going to set this filter to simulate the frequency characteristics of the old analog telephone, li telephone line. Okay? And that was between 300 and 3000 Hertz. So you can put in here 300 and 3000. And then uh, for the transition width here you can put in something small like 10. Like this. And now you can connect this. So we the demulator goes to the bandpass filter and the bandpass filter goes to the audio sync. And then you can also connect the second waterfall display to the output of the bandpass filter like this. And then you can run this. See? And now this sounds like a low quality radio. <laughs> I mean, first we are static, but static of high quality. <laughs> 
And now we have static here of low quality. And you can see here, eh, between uh, 300 and 3000, we have data, and all the rest is blue. So that's filtered out. If you, yeah, the, the music that is playing now is, uh, is of low quality, <laughs> like it wasn't before. <laughs> Those filters, of course, I put them here in the audio side because that's why I can easily uh, show you the effect and when you listen to it with the audio effect. But of course, filters can be used all over the place as long as you use uh, the correct values uh, for sample rate, frequencies, uh, matching of impedances. Okay, so this was a quick overview, an intro of what you can do uh, with uh, software-defined radio. And, uh, advantage if uh, we have some radio stations is that you can even have more uh, fun doing it here. It's just a bit of static. But it shows you that with those devices, if you are in a less uh, noisy environment, and I, I'm talking about radio frequency because I think there are a lot of radio frequency here, maybe like for example my transmitter, maybe. Um, but that with some simple devices like that, because I think a couple of years ago I bought them around ten dollar piece, uh, I, they are probably even cheaper now, that you can still have uh, some fun. Also if you want just to experiment with those audio sync and things like that, you, you don't even need um, a source, I mean uh, a device, if, if I can find it back somewhere in there, there is, have to be signal generators. Waveform generators, here. See? If you are interested, these are components you can uh, play with. They allow you to have a signal source, uh, for example, sine wave, a simple sine wave. And then you can try out uh, the different filters, so what that gives. What, what I did also, for example, is... Um, sorry, I forgot the name in English. It's a specific radio term where you have two signals that are very close to each other, and then they interfere with, the, with each other. And the no, no. Uh, it's what you what you have is if you have those. So you have, for example, uh, a signal that. Sorry. Harmonic no, not harmonic distortion. But doesn't. It, it, I'm not on. I'm not on uh, Wi-Fi. Is someone uh, access to the Wi-Fi? Yeah, if you can go to the Dutch <laughs> Wikipedia, and I can find the Dutch word, and then we can switch. Beatings, that's it, beatings. Yeah, so, beatings. So, th the thing is, you have a wave, for example, of one make a one, thousand hertz for example and another one that is one hundred thousand and one sorry so thousand and thousand and one if you put them together yeah you will have beating so you will have a noise that slowly amplifies uh, becomes louder and then slowly becomes slower again uh, lower again so and, and it uh, we call it uh, zwevingen so it's something that floats see it all uh, floats in and out. And that's something that I was able to do with this. I just put in two sources, two signal sources with a slightly different frequency, combine them, then have my uh, displays with my oscilloscope, and, uh, and then you can actually see the, the waves that, uh, that are evolving. So even, even if you don't have any hardware, you can still do still some things with, uh, with GNU Radio. Okay. 
Okay, thank you for your attention then. I would like to get my devices back, so the, the USB sticks and uh, the dongle stick. Oh, I don't think I don't think my uh, my device goes that low. The SDR that I have, but we can try. Huh? So let me say that the minimum is 1 megahertz. And you say that it is 6 megahertz, around 6 megahertz? 609. Six. 609. Oh, 609, yeah, okay. I was already thinking that uh, 6 megahertz is really low. <laughs> that's, that's what my... Uh, my power boosted Apple computer had it. <laughs> Apple II, I mean. <laughs> I had 1 megahertz and later on uh, 6 megahertz. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> 600, and let's do 601 and 100. And let's Uh, no, let me put in the waterfall for the RF. That's the wrong one, sorry. It's a waterfall. No, I can I can hear the beating that it's oversampling on my machine. But I have something here. Yeah. So that would be around 608.4. Yeah, I know, but it didn't take it. Probably, because, yeah, it's outside. This. Yeah, you see, but the sampling rate is not high enough to... But we can still see something. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs>